Microbiome affects not just our physical health, but it can affect our, I've heard you say, our sleep, our mood. It can cause cancer, which of course is physical, and and our weight. Can you go into a, some of the things that the microbiome affects that we might not think about in, uh, first, first up? Absolutely. No, I'm so glad you brought up that connection. So first of all, the gut-brain connection if we think about a hormone like serotonin, which we think of as the feel-good hormone, we know that most of the serotonin is actually made in our gut by the gut bacteria. And of course, serotonin is a precursor hormone for melatonin, the sleep hormone. So again, we have this connection. So we have this bi-directional connection between what's going on in the brain and the gut. The brain can affect gut motility, secretion, absorption of nutrients. The gut can affect mood, and um, again, feelings of anxiety, et cetera. So those two are very well connected for sure. When you think about the fact that the microbiome can influence the immune system, you start to see how autoimmune diseases like lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, Crohn's, et cetera, we have over a hundred different autoimmune diseases now. You start to see how, again, microbial disruption can be foundational to those diseases developing. We have data about heart disease, coronary artery disease, arrhythmias, all of these things being connected. Obesity is a huge one. We know that certain microbes can increase the amount of calories, what we call the energy harvest, what they pull out of food. So if you give two people with different microbiomes the exact same food, you can see more or less weight gain from the exact same meal, same calories, same macro and micronutrients based on their microbial complement. There's a famous study done from researchers at Wash U in St. Louis where they took two identical twins who were discordant for weight. So they were identical genetically, but one twin was obese and one was lean. And they took microbes from the twins and they injected them into germ-free mice. When I say injected, into the colon into germ-free mice who didn't have a microbiome. And without any change in diet or exercise, you know, they have the little mouse treadmill thing they have them run on in these studies. So without any changes, the mouse who got the microbes from the obese twin started to gain weight. So we, we see that the microbiome controls a lot of these things. We know, for example, there's a bacteria called Kristen senilacea, which is associated with leanness. And that tends to be one that is mostly inherited. So most of our microbiome is made through our diet, our environment, the other people in our community, our exposure to animals, et cetera. But Kristen senilacea seems to be one of those bacteria that has a strong sort of genetic component and it's associated with leanness so we've probably all seen those families where everybody's just a bean pole, right? And, you know, some of them eat a lot and some of them eat a little, but nobody really gains weight. It's definitely, there are some people who have a microbiome that is more associated with leanness. But here's the thing. It all comes back to, again, what they eat. So the people who have the Kristen Senilacea or the F. prosnitzii, they're also the ones who tend to be eating lots of plants and, you know, they're not on the sort of Cheeto cheeseburger diet. And that's why when you transport those microbes, you can see temporary weight gain or weight loss, but you can't, we can't take those microbes and put them into somebody else's body and not change your diet and expect to see meaningful weight gain or weight loss. So we always have to remember that dietary component. Yeah, there's that there's that 30 hour window where they'll just change right back unless you you that's right eat it with some healthy fiber. That's absolutely right. So I don't like to oversell the microbiome. You know, it's not the reason my daughter's room is really messy, or you know, <laughs> or I'm not a faster runner. Like, why can't I run a sub four marathon? It's my microbiome. Um, <laughs> I wish I could just get some fast microbes. But it does, I mean, I think it's so important for people to understand that we are animated by our microbes. We are like the hive and they are the worker bees in our bodies doing all these important processes, digesting the food, synthesizing the fat soluble vitamins like A, D, E, and K, um, breaking down toxic compounds, growing new blood vessels, training the immune system, turning genes on and off. And so when that process, when our worker bees are unhealthy, either we don't have enough of them or we don't have the right ones at the right station, when that process is disrupted, it disrupts a lot of our bodily processes. 
And that doesn't mean there are not other things involved too, right? There are other components, there are genetic components, there are other epigenetic environmental factors that we may or may not be aware of, but it is an important foundational contribution to so many different disease states.